What's going on you guys? Mo Awesome from Awesome MTB and it is an amazing time to be a mountain biker right now. There is so many amazing bikes out there for you to choose from and it can sometimes get overwhelming making a decision just because all the bikes seem somewhat similar especially if you're looking at a certain category. Now in this video we're going to go over the best long travel 29ers of 2020 to help make your bike buying decision a little bit easier. By the end of this video you should have a better idea of what your next long travel 29er is going to be. Now before we get into this video if you guys could hit that like button it would be awesome. Helps out the channel a ton. We're also doing a giveaway so if you want a chance to win an awesome MTB t-shirt as soon as this video hits a thousand likes we'll give away two awesome MTB t-shirt. All you have to do is be sure to be subscribed and let us know in the comment section what's your favorite long travel 29er. Like if you had to buy one tomorrow I'm really curious what you guys would buy. So let us know in the comment section. I'm gonna let you guys know my favorites and without further ado, let's get after the video. So the first bike we're gonna talk about today is gonna be one of my personal favorite test bikes of 2019 and that's the Specialized Enduro 29. What I really love about this bike is they kind of went full into the long travel 29 spectrum. They definitely didn't hold back. You have 170 mils of travel, both front and rear. So this thing is a monster truck combined with the 29 inch wheels. For the head angle, you have a 63.8 or nine degree head angle. Um, so really slack as well. So all that travel, that slack head angle, and then you also have that longer wheelbase. So the wheelbase is actually a 1302 and for an XL, well, they call it a S5. Specialized basically kind of straight away from the general sizing. It went to like S3, S2, S4, which in all honesty, when you look at the numbers on paper, essentially it matches up to size XL, large, medium. Um, it does have a 442 chainstay, slightly on the longer side, which I do tend to like on long travel 29ers. When I had a chance to ride this bike last year, um, definitely blew my mind. I felt like the bike stayed really well planted in corners and in straight lines. That was no surprise for me just looking at those numbers. Normally when you go a little bit longer on the chain state you're gonna get a lot of high speed stability as well as stability in corners as well. And I did feel even though the pedal bob you definitely noticed it a little bit more so than uh, a similar bike like the Mega Tower. I feel like that's the bike that people compare this to. It wasn't that bad. So uh, yes, you had to be a little bit more seated climbing on more prolonged steep climbs. However, I was very impressed by the climbing ability of the Enduro 29. The only downside I would say is gonna be purchasing this bike. So the S-Works model, which unfortunately is the cooler colors, and I mean, color makes you like 15% faster last time I checked. You're looking at 9750 for an XTR build. I don't know, I know that XTR and XX1 are supposed to be in the same category. Personally, after a lot of testing last year, I felt like XX1 was probably a step ahead of XTR, even though XTR felt really good. Um, you also get a couple of other specialized parts on there, which even though really high-end stuff, I've put some specialized parts through the ringer. At that price point, I would like to see a little bit more aftermarket parts on the bike. So in terms of pricing, I definitely think that build might not necessarily be the best bang for buck. You can step down to the 6550 price point, which I think is uh, probably the best bang bang for buck build they have in that bike. Solid suspension, solid drivetrain, um, and a really nice package overall. So the next bike we're gonna talk about for 2020 is gonna be the Santa Cruz Mega Tower. And I feel like this bike gets compared to the Specialized Enduro a lot even though I do feel like both these bikes have different personalities. And I did have a chance to demo the Mega Tower last year. I also demoed the High Tower. I'll save that for a later video because I don't feel like the High Tower is gonna fall into that long travel 29er spectrum, but the Mega Tower does. So the Mega Tower has 160 millimeters of travel, both front and rear on their builds. And you're looking at a 65 degree head angle. So for the chainstay, you're looking at a 435, so slightly shorter than the Specialized Enduro as well. And what I personally felt on this bike while riding it last year is it felt like one of the most comfortable 
uh, bike to pedal when seated. So a lot of people, you're gonna buy these bikes, you're probably gonna have some big mountains near your house. I felt like that bike, you could just sit and pedal for days in the saddle, which is not something you normally get from the long travel 29er market. So if you have really big mountains next to your house, I do think that the Mega Tower for its travel is probably one of the better pedaling bikes on the market currently. In terms of descending, you definitely felt like that bike really shined at high speed straight lines. In terms of cornering, in comparison to the Specialized Enduro, I didn't feel like it tracked as well. However, with that being said, I definitely felt like the Mega Tower was slightly more nimble than the Enduro when it came to really whipping that bike around. So also keep in mind, it is VPP. I know a lot of people are probably gonna bash me in the comments. However, I definitely feel like with the Santa Cruz lineup and their iteration of VPP, you definitely feel like the suspension feels a little bit harsher than other suspension designs out there. So I'm gonna strictly compare this to the Enduro, uh, where the Enduro felt like 170 millimeters of pure travel, even felt like it had a little bit more. It was really optimized for traction. The Mega Tower definitely feels like it stops at 160. And I feel like uh, VPP for me personally just feels uh, a tad harsher than other suspension designs out there. With that being said, a quick fix to this is to run a coil on there or maybe get your shock a little bit more custom tuned. Um, but yeah, I feel like coils on VPP work insanely well and that's probably something I would put on the Mega Tower if I own that bike. So uh, pros, amazing pedaler, cons, slightly harsh suspension design, but a solid bike for 2020. Now, another really hot long travel 29er for 2020. And this one, I'm actually really curious to get a lot more pedal time on it is the Rocky Mountain Slayer. Now, I know a lot of people are probably cringing right now because they're thinking of that pink bike review of that Slayer. Um, for those of you who don't know what happened, uh, in the pink bike review, they did have a frame snap on them. I believe it was something with the rear triangle. With that being said, I didn't really look too much into that frame snapping, just because I have been riding for a while. I've gone through plenty of frames. Uh, stuff happens. Every now and then, there's that one frame that, man, it just, maybe there's like an air in the, the carbon mold or carbon layup or just something went wrong. Um, for a company to just not have one frame out of like a batch of say 10,000 to go wrong or something to go wrong and there's so many other variables. Um, unfortunately, the one frame that did happen to go wrong, it was the pink bike review and obviously there's a lot of eyes on that review but that's just the review game. It's high risk, high reward. So with the Rocky Mountain Slayer 29, I really do feel like, and I don't know which bike came out first, the Enduro 2020 or the Rocky Mountain Slayer, but when you look on paper, the Slayer is getting really close to the Enduro, or I'm gonna put it the other way, Enduro's getting really close to the Slayer in terms of Geo, and that makes me happy. Cause like I said, price point on the Enduro is pretty up there. And I feel like the Slayer has a little bit more of affordable options for people and some solid builds as well. And you still get that really dial Geo that the Enduro offers. My only concern with this bike is the seat angle does seem a little bit on the slacker side. Curious to get on this bike and see how it pedals in the saddle. But I will say that is looking like a very hot bike for 2020 and the price point is really nice as well. So for $49.99, this is their more affordable build. However, you're getting top of the line suspension and a really solid build. So let me go over it a little bit. You get a coil shock, a Lyric fork, a Shimano SLX XT drivetrain with SLX four piston brakes, in all honesty, SLX feels a lot like XT. If you want to step up for $79.99, you get a top of the line, full baller build. And like I said, when you're looking at the S-Works Enduro in comparison to this build, man, it's really tough. $2,000 saving for a bike that on paper has really similar geos and I think it's gonna ride very similar as well. We'll be sure to update you guys as soon as we get a lot of saddle time in the Slayer in 2020. But for now, I'm putting it on the list of hot long travel 29ers of 2020. All right, so shifting gears a little bit. A lot of you guys are probably like, man, is every bike on this list gonna be so many thousands of dollars? We're gonna bring the price point back. We're gonna talk about the YT Capra 29er. Now, a lot of you guys are probably familiar with YT. Direct to consumer brand, really affordable prices, and bikes that are made to shred. I feel like YT was one of the first companies to make direct to consumer cool. Like they kinda had that cool, edgy approach. The YT Capra is a 170 millimeter 29er with a 65 degree 
tree head angle. You definitely got that monster truck on wheels with a slack head angle. However, with that being said, I would say the YT Capra 29 does fall on the smaller side in terms of sizing. And I would actually say it's probably a size smaller than other comparable brands. When I rode that bike, I actually had to ride a 2XL, which was pretty interesting. So that is one thing to note here. One thing to mention about this bike is it does have a very active suspension design. So if you're a rider out there and you're looking for a bike to stick to the ground over the gnarliest of terrain, this is definitely that bike. Now the biggest highlight of this bike is going to be the price point. And for 5,500, you get a top of the line build. And we're talking about some of the same builds in other brands are going for about nine grand. This is rocking at 5,500 top of the line suspension and a really solid build overall. And if that is out of the budget, they actually have an aluminum base model of this bike. I wanna say price point there is about 2,300. So from 2,300 to 5,500, you have so many options to choose from. Amazing price point. Sizing is a tad weird, very active suspension design. And that's gonna sum up the Capra 29 for 2020. I'm gonna put the Orbea Rayon in the list of hot 29ers for 2020. We had a chance to demo the Orbea Rayon last year and I was very impressed by it. I thought it was a really well composed all mountain bike and it had a very unique suspension design. Couldn't really put my finger on the Orbea and what it felt like. And that was a really cool feeling to, to kind of have a bike that kind of stands out. It had a really kind of insane pump out of corners. I feel like it carried speed really well. With all that being said, they made it even more aggressive. And that was probably one of the drawbacks when I demoed this bike last year, is I just felt like it could use a little bit more oomph on the downhills. I'm not sure oomph is a word, but we're running with it. And so, yeah, so the, now they made it 160 mils of travel in the rear, 170 mils up front. You have a 64.5 degree head angle. And I don't know, everything just looking really good on paper. So excited to get back on this bike. But what I really think makes this bike stand out is the custom custom Mayo program. And that's basically their custom color program, which I believe is at no extra charge. I need to look into that. So going back to that thing about how this bike feels on the trail and how I couldn't compare it to anything, now you don't have to look like the other bikes either. And I think in this day and age when all bikes are starting to look somewhat similar, it's really cool that this company has found a way to make its bike stand out. I think it's a strong contender for Hot 29er of 2020. So now I'm sure there's people out there that are probably thinking to themselves, Mo, you didn't talk about this bike. You didn't talk about that bike. Your list is completely wrong. You have no idea what you're talking about. You're a kook, go cut your hair. Okay, maybe that last part is only my mom. But with all this being said, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm the only person that knows about bikes. So let me know in the comment section, did we miss anything on this list? Is there anything that you would have put on this list? Do you guys agree with my list for Hot 29ers of 2020? And what would you have liked me to talk about? Or what do you wanna see us demo this year? We're always open to new ideas and opportunities to test out certain bikes throughout the year. So if you want our feedback about a certain bike, definitely let us know in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, you found it helpful, please hit that like button helps out the channel a ton. Like I said, we're giving away two t-shirts. So if you want a chance to win it, as soon as this video hits a thousand likes, we are going to pick two people from the comment section and send them a t-shirt. So be sure to subscribe to not miss any other videos. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. And until next time, you guys ride awesome. Yew.